Let's get comfortable. Wonderful to have you back in Australia, Your Holiness, and to be with you again on the stage for this Science and Mind Forum, our third time. Much to cover. We've talked about a lot, but we've got some new terrain to cover today. I wanted to, all of our speakers are going to talk about this relationship between body and mind, and I guess our individual minds. I wanted to start by looking at our social selves and how our mind connects with others. And I guess also, given your interest in the way we learn about compassion, I'm interested in the relationship between leadership and compassion. You've described uh, compassion as the radicalism of our time. Why do you think compassion is a radical act? Why is compassion for you radical for our time? What do you mean radical? It's normal. <laughs> because, you see, uh, we born uh, see, with, I think, full of affection. Uh, and then, after birth, uh, uh, next few weeks, just simply mother's physical touch is the crucial factor for proper enlarging their brain. So, physical touch with mother, uh, that means affection, compassion, love, already there. See, the, like that, you see this, a touch like that, <laughs> no effect. <laughs> so, the child, it's a very young child, you see, they want sort of one because pillow, pillow, go like that. I don't think any sort of effect on their brain. The mother's body, uh, because the child, no knowledge at that time. You see, uh, I think very limited sort of the skill of thought, uh, and of course, words not yet sort of come. So therefore. They no idea who is that person. But biologically, the, even the animal, the, they're totally relying on that person, their mother. So that's biological. So we born that way, we grown that way. So love, affection, is very, very important sort of element when we start our life. So, as a result, uh, the experience at that moment is very much sort of absorbed in our blood. So, people uh, who later is it, pay more attention about these values, the physical health better, and forget these values, the just value of money. Oh, not working, not working. Rest, rest. <laughs> We've got that as a backup if we need it. Check one, two, check, check. Can we have the... Uh, oh, we've all, have we all lost our mics? Can you hear me? There we are. We're back. Great. Okay. Working, working? Yes, yes. Uh, Up the back? Yes. <laughs> uh, so that's why... Uh, for example, feeling of I... It's radical, according to your sense. Feeling of I. Yes. It's radical. I don't think it's radical. I mean, it's the I feeling of I, the feeling of self. Sense of oneself. Is that what you refer? Well, I. This so these are the nature. This part of because of the natural sort of thing. So affection, also is in nature. And particularly, we born that way, not like some other sort of animal without sort of meeting with mother. I often is telling uh, uh, some turtles, I notice, they say the egg 
uh, after um, uh, uh, Exodus was delayed. Yeah. Then the mother, of course, mother has some sort of sense of protection. So mm. digging quite deep in sand, and then all the egg is put there, then cover. So some sense of protection. Then mother left, never meet. So such case, I don't think uh, the, 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 the biologically affection, I don't think there. So if we try, we say mother keep, and then tell youngster, kasa, kontel kasa, hitched, hatch, then let them live together. I don't think both sides some affection. So thankfully, because nature is created that way. Thankfully, we're not all turtles. <laughs> hmm? Thankfully, we are not turtles that hatch so alone. We are, we are social We are beings. the category in those sort of things, those mammals, which they are youngster, grown up, their survival totally depend on uh, hmm. mother or someone else sort of care. So their affection is the key element in mental level. Without that, that effort will not come. So therefore, this is part of our life. So not, not something strange. It's interesting to me then about the role of, of, of leadership and compassion. And whether leaders, not yourself obviously, but many leaders, political leaders for example, but, but all sorts of leaders seem to fear their capacity to express compassion in public, that almost it's an act of vulnerability to do that and they think instead they need to be tough and strong-minded instead of compassionate in their leadership. Mm. What do you think, do we lose that a access to our That's, compassion itself? Because of the, uh, uh, the modern culture, there's not much talk, not much notice about this value. Mm. I think till ch children, say I think six, seven, eight, maybe I think 10, then beyond that, uh, feels no relevant. Uh, so then, instead of sort of oh, om heartedness or sort of seeing uh, cause of that, uh, pay attention <clears throat> about other. I think children, youngsters, they do not care with the other children uh, whether or what this right, what this right race, this race or or different, don't care about different races, uh, and uh, uh, as a believer or non-believer, don't care. So long, smile each other, play each other, then they feel very happy. Mm. Now, grown up, now diminishing that kind of sort of attitude, now important is uh, what is their uh, social background, or what faith make a distinction. Uh, then the whole life, say money, power, uh, so material culture, material way of life. So leadership come from that, same way. And also, also leadership who lead people, also that kind of, because of the heritage way, that kind of heritage. Then, no room, about compassion. However, uh, uh, I think late uh, 20th century, uh, some leaders sort of state, statement, uh, the word compassion occasionally come, appear, <laughs> like that. So otherwise, you see, more warm-heartedness and respect other, more concern of others, uh, then you see people are, are more sort of ready to reconciliate then, you see, people consider that as a weakness, as you mentioned, mm. passive weakness. So therefore, you see, deliberately try to uh, no longer that kind of feeling and very tough, ready to fight. 
<laughs> that consider oh very powerful leader. So it's, I think a whole sort of wave thinking, or wave culture, built like that. That's why in the modern society, uh, those sort of society, materially highly developed, and also the education also is a highly sort of sorry, educated people, but no guarantee. Be happy. A lot of those people, a deep insight, lonely feeling, too much distress. So these people, this is relying peace of mind from drug, alcohol, like that. So they totally neglect about this inner value, uh, actually ultimate source of peace of mind. That neglected, then relying on external means, and also as you go, sort of say vacation and weekend. <laughs> Just so that, so so simple. Young do Just just trying to distract themselves and oh. the, the, through sightseeing. Oh. So in the family, in the office, a lot of problems and dealing difficulties. Uh, and then difficult to keep peace of mind. Mm -hmm. So uh, hoping to go different places uh, and seeing something new, hear something new, and then a oh, short moment like painkiller. Uh, sh short moment, you say, forget about this sort of thing. And when after uh, weekend, come back home, come back office, then, then, then go again, you see, <laughs> difficulties. <laughs> if peace of mind is the ones there and more holistic, more realistic attitude, then while remain the problem, oh, you can keep peace of mind. That's, I think, a human way. We have this marvelous intelligence, so we must utilize that intelligence and the potential. Our leaders seem to influence the well-being and happiness of whole populations. They're important. They tell us, they, they, they show us the way, in a way, to, to, how to how to be compassionate to others. And I wonder what, when, when leaders lose that compassionate self, when they feel they have to be tough in public, not vulnerable, what can we do about that? Do we have, that, I think, do we have a uh, way of Mr. encouraging them to be something else? Because uh, often we feel powerless in the face of leaders who uh, lack compassion. And I'm thinking particularly in relation to World Refugee Day, which is this very day. Uh, but we'll come to that. Of course not. What? Oh, well. So, for example, today is World Refugee Day, and we're, we live on a big island here in Australia. We're far away from Syria and Sudan and Tibet, so we feel we can't connect. So we connect to the experiences of refugees through our leaders, and that's been a very complicated discussion in Australia. There's been a lot of debate. So I guess I'm interested in how can we encourage our leaders to connect with their own compassionate selves? <laughs> Long, I think question. that is your business, not my business. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just just spent a few days. Now I think next three days I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> As a human being, of course, uh, whenever you say I have the opportunity to share some of my belief, uh, my concept of my 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 preset where. Uh, I share. Whether they uh, feel some useful or not, I just share. Mm. Uh, that's my sort of what's it, uh, duty. Then your daily problem is your problem. <laughs> Good answer. But still, independent of that, how can we encourage our leaders to feel confident to be compassionate? Then also, you see, the today's leader come from a society where no one talk about this inner value. So we can't blame them. Difficult to change. 
I think in early uh, uh, 1970, I was in Europe, first time. Uh, in Geneva, uh, we talked so, with some, pe some people, some old people. Uh, uh, then it's talking, I think, similar sort of subject. Then I express now the old people, older generation, now not much sort of, or, of course, a chance to change, not much hope. Then those, those gentlemen, <laughs> a little bit of sort of say, shock, sort of surprise, that by sort of, I really feel that. They are mental thinking, already sort of, because of that, fixed. So only hope is younger generation with new sort of holistic education, then the possibility to build new sort of society, new cultural heritage, where culture, new, new culture, new way of life. Uh, not negative or this inner value. Uh, meantime, material facility also is to further develop, use that, but meantime, keep our basic human values. Then, uh, that not through teaching, not through prayer, not through meditation, but through education. That I'm, so not only just me, many of my friends, many scientists, Many thinkers uh, and educationists, uh, many occasions in America and also Canada and also Europe, uh, see the existing education system is not complete, not adequate. Mm. So actually, because of that kind of sort of the observation, right? observation, you see, uh, some scientists, some educationists, uh, now, in, in India, India also now, some kind of sort of uh, research work, how to introduce in uh, in secular education, how to introduce these values, not relying on religious faith. So we call secular ethics into secular education. So that's my main concern. I'm not expecting big change existing society. Mm. I think I don't think we can. You see, there's only pray, hope. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a, I, often I think, what we have. I, I think more bluntly speaking, uh, something like already is the cancer, the, like corruption. I think Australia corruption. I think not much serious. How how serious corruption? Small or big? Small. Small. Huh? We Small. think. That's very good. <laughs> That's your achievement. Very good. Uh, and the, uh, how much serious gap rich and poor? Small. Well, it's interesting you say that. Can I just tell you something there? We are a very wealthy country, very privileged, but That's right. presently one in five Children live under the poverty line. One. One in five children. Oh, one in five. Hmm. I don't know what that is about. I mean, that seems to me, if we're talking about accessing compassion, why, why in a, a country that has so much going for it do we have so many children living in poverty, a measure of poverty? I don't understand that. Do you understand that? <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, it's the person who uh, just to visit and stay. <laughs> uh, the organizer arranges my uh, sort of stay in a big hotel. You don't have to comment on the Australian situation. But, <laughs> so I don't know. It's but more, like more generally, um, I'm interested in what that says about us. Sometimes I think we become distracted from from being compassionate or disabled from being compassionate in our own neighbourhoods. 
In a country of great privilege like ours, I wonder how we reach into the lives of people that we don't feel connected to in order to change a statistic like that. Where do we start? So I think better to ask. True, that's true. I have one more question for you. Oh. And, that, <laughs> and that is, you, you talk about compassion, we've talked a little bit about compassion in public life, but you, we're often very tough on ourselves. We judge ourselves, we judge ourselves for being sad, we judge ourselves in all sorts of ways for not measuring up. How important is self-compassion? Okay. So, 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 so. Oh, our self-compassion, uh, so long feeling of self there, self-compassion always there, always there, always there. Ah. That's very important. Uh, what, what do you what say, self-love way, uh, self-cherishing way, self-love. Without that, how can you extend love to other individual, S some, some people, you see. Uh, I heard, you see, they hate themselves. Mm. A such person, impossible to extend uh, love or compassion to others. They first love oneself, then extend. Although, can it work the other way? If you don't have self-love, can you learn about that through reaching out to others? I think the little bit sort of negative towards oneself, I think that automatically become negative to others. Impossible mm. to develop genuine sense of love to others. Impossible. Because when people have been abused, I guess, in their childhood, and you mm. talked about the love of a mother, a lot of children don't have necessarily access to that love mm. that we hope that they yes. will have. So, so that's the problem. Mm. That's the seed of unhealthy society. Like that. I don't know. This is a really, really serious matter. Not only Australian, but the whole seven billion human beings. Now we reach some critical sort of cause of that, cause of that level. And then meantime, population increasing. Uh, and I look from my room, uh, from I think, uh, usually I got up 3.30. So less car. Then around uh, five o'clock, five, a lot of cars. Almost, I think, did noon. I, 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 the, uh, I, cause I, I have no, no chances to see. So I think a lot of car, and I feel uh, human population now today seven billion. Now within this century, end of this century, human population ten billions. In the meantime, this gap rich and poor must sort of reduce. So then, unthinkable, 10 billion car. Mm. I think difficult. <laughs> yes, we're obsessed with so our cars. So our lifestyle, mm. you see, have to sort of think more realistic way. Economy sort of system, economy structure, existing economy sort of structure, uh, will not be sustainable economy. So this is our problem. This is a worldwide problem, not just uh, your own area. I think, uh, as you mentioned, the, the, cause of the, as far as sort of living standard is concerned, Australia is very, very good, very successful, because of that very, very happy society. And at the same time, there are some problems, mm. there, as you mentioned. So. Well, let's hear from our other esteemed speakers. Let me uh, reintroduce you, Jayshree Kulkarni, Professor of Psychiatry and, uh, and Director of the Monash Alfred Psychiatry Research Centre here in Melbourne. Over to you, Jayshree. Thank you very much. And uh, it is an incredible honour to be sitting here speaking with you. I'd like to thank the organisers for giving me this opportunity. I'm a psychiatrist. So my job is to help Then please people. tell me, my way of thinking is something wrong? 
some patient, I think maybe I also a patient of psychiatry. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think psychiatry would be out of business if everybody was like you. <laughs> <laughs> But unfortunately, I, what I want to speak about is an issue which you touched on. My area is women and helping women who have depression, schizophrenia, other conditions. And we find that in the world and in Australia, there is a growing problem of violence against women. And, uh, there are some obviously very high profile cases recently we have seen in the news. But in the whole um, spectrum, we are really seeing an increased number of sexual assault, physical assault against women. In Australia in 2006, the, the uh, data on 20,000 women showed that 40%, 4-0% of the women had experienced some kind of assault or uh, physical or sexual nature, which is very high. It's a big problem. The situation in India, um, mm. the situation in many parts of the world is, is, is worsening in terms of the assault. And while this in itself is a big problem because it is related to mental health issues, depression and so on, there is an even worse situation as shown by a study done in the UK where the physical and sexual assault of pregnant women, and there was a survey of about uh, 16,000 women was conducted and the women who had assault in pregnancy, their children, oh. their children uh, had problems with education, learning, their own development for up to six years of life. So what is the neuroscience here is that when there is assault, there is a rise in, a, in the hormone cortisol, mm. which is produced by the adrenal gland in the back. And this hormone in the brain causes great difficulties with memory, mm. with learning, with control of anger, and many other effects in the brain. But what we are understanding now is that in pregnant women who have stress and particularly bad stress with the assault, this cortisol mm. increase in the pregnant woman is transmitted mm. to the fetus so that we have a transgenerational problem of the uh, educational uh, and other emotional problems in the children. Even worse, we know about the gene-environment interaction there is a significant interaction between cortisol and serotonin, which is another brain chemical that is related to depression and, and uh, happiness. And this gene interaction is then, is, uh, is, is then developed in the child whose mother has had abuse. And if she has children, this becomes transmitted mm -hmm. again. So one of the big concerns that we have is that what is happening to women um, is a problem for, obviously a big problem for the woman and society, but it is a transgenerational problem. It is a big problem. One of the issues that we have with violence, underpinning violence, is the inequality in sexes, sexism. And there are many institutions which still do not recognize men and women as different but equal. I have to say, many organized religions do not provide uh, equality for men and women. And this may be an issue uh, for the 
concept for society of equality, but it's also a problem for the individual who wants to take comfort from religion, particularly uh, for some women. So this is, this is a, a society-wide issue, but it is translated into the psyche or the psychological aspects that many women face. For centuries, women have been told they are not as good. We see examples of that in many, many places. So this is a, this is a problem for happiness and fulfillment in half the world's population. And it is not something that is spoken about specifically for the context of improving society. Um, the biology, of course, is, is uh, quite profound for women experiencing mental illness. Um, there are specific issues of changes in life cycle hormones around the menopause, other times, this is the work we've been doing, looking at depression that arises in middle-aged women because of a combination of environmental factors, the psychological factors, particularly self-esteem, feeling um, old, feeling um, unwanted, on top of uh, institutionalized concepts that uh, women are, are not as good as men. And then the translated biological hormone issues that make the problems uh, even worse for a number of women. So I would like to ask you how we as society, not just in Australia but worldwide, mm -hmm. uh, try to improve the status of women and therefore diminish the sexism and, and, and also tackle this gender violence. Because in the end, of course, we are looking for the next generations to have a happier, healthier, fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. Uh, since a number of years, you see, after noticeably some sort of discrimination way, or look, look at that, or looking down. Uh, 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 I usually is telling, also I feel, uh, the human society, I think a few hundred thousand years, perhaps, I think. Then, firstly, small population. Uh, so they are hey, equal. Everybody uh, work together, mainly work for their yeah, sort of food, no, for survival. So all people sort of member of the whole community work together uh, and share together. Then eventually, I think population increase and then farming system start. Then I think more sort of stress, the individual families, perhaps I think. Uh, so some mischievous people then gradually start stealing, bully like that. Uh, so then, concept of leadership come. At that time, no rule of education. So in order to become leadership of the community, only physical strength. So that is the uh, uh, beginning of male dominance. Male, usually physically, more stronger, like that. Uh, then, uh, say about a thousand years, uh, or perhaps two thousand, maybe two thousand. Uh, I don't know. Education. When education start? Three thousand. Yeah, about three thousand. Uh, three thousand years. 
so then education brought more equal those educated female uh, gradually they have a new opportunity to become more equal uh, and particularly in modern modern time then now today as we just as some already touched the importance of the human affection now that biologically female the more potential i often is telling uh, some scientist the so the uh, observed or experiment uh, some sort of movie picture uh, someone who really passing through painful experience then uh, one female one male male way watching uh, then then the female the phys- uh, physically much more intolerance way intolerance or more concern more f- strong stronger feeling including heart beating or, or cr- crying like that uh, so naturally uh, uh, female you see uh, take sort of care several years uh, uh, their child the animal also as i cosmetic lobos as i mentioned earlier so therefore they biologically most sort of what's the potential to take care uh, through affection so now time come we need not only education but also you see the in education the cause of the education about uh, compassion affection so we need special effort to promote this inner value in that respect female should take more active role so female become very very important so i think once we realize some of the existing sort of attitude female will be work i think the old thinking at that time the circumstances itself also you see there no education like that like other animal only the stronger body the male usually is it take the cause leader like that so that's my view uh then some religious or should they tradition also sometimes there are little sort of discrimination on the basis of kasa gender gender like that so this i think through education yeah. i think will change uh, then i i just is want the uh, kasa uh, pregnant the uh, some of the sex no uh, so uh, after pregnant uh, one month and a pregnant is it they say is it uh, uh, five months six months then already they was a fetus survey already fit not only fetus i think i think the real body child's body already now forming isn't it i'm mm-hmm. um, for, formed mm-hmm. hard hard this brain thing. brain forms at f- four weeks four weeks four weeks Uh, there is a lot of uh, brain so some sort of sex the just images of the pregnant yes uh, within sort of four weeks yes same effect in uh, the the cortisol effect you mean oh thank you yeah. no. oh. the cortisol effect is is there from the beginning of the the fetus development because it's the cortisol in the mother that is high when she is very stressed over a long period of time that is transmitted to the fetus right from the beginning of the fetus's life this this question a little bit sort of because of the cause of shy question i think shy way she but now now we are discussing as a scientist no? <laughs> so so you you know sex with uh, the husband or living person Oh. 
some differences? Sorry, I'm not quite... Sex with the husband? Yes. Also same sort of damage? Uh, you mean it, the assault? Assault marriage, that? Champagne. Mutually, so agree. Yes, 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 sex. yes, yes, yes. That also some effect? Negative uh, effect? No, no, so no, no, no. no. If, uh, what about the cortisol levels in the man as well? Is that, no. Can that be, or is it... So, so there are not only physical thing, but emotion oh, yes, yes. involved yes. now. Yeah, that, that's the important... What this is sex or with unwanted person. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Or without sort of, what's the... I mean, kasota, bully. Yes. Uh, then, right. psychologically, not welcome. That's right. So, mainly psychological factor. Yes, that's right. It, it's it's um, so an, obviously the psychology you see the much sort of mental attitude much related with this hormone or these things as you mentioned. That's right. Uh, that's yes, clear. I am sort of feeling without so I mean separate mental sort of attitude uh, and just physical. So even mentally, except, but then physically, because of that. Some sort of negative effect. What the team we are doing? It's just what. So it's always wanted. It's always wanted to know if the pregnant woman has sex with her husband, um, would that also make difference in the level of cortisol? No, husband also with willingly. With willingly. <laughs> uh, with, with. The cortisol is increased in very difficult uh, situations. So situations that are psychologically uh, negative. So uh, any activities that the pregnant woman takes which is pleasurable for her, which is of her consent, is good. Yes. Uh, it is only the difficulties when yeah. it is, That's it is mainly negative. Oh, mind. But yes. it's the concept of thinking about the translation of emotional experiences through hormonal uh, hormones that have an impact directly on the developing brain of the fetus. Yes. And this is a, an area which um, has been understood in um, human evolution in, in some ways, but we are now understanding more directly the neuroscience of this particular interaction between cortisol, serotonin, mm. and other brain chemistry. That's the, new, the more recent work. But it does mean that we need to be careful of the mental state that women who are pregnant, that yeah, they are that's in. Right. That's right. Now may I ask another sort of silly question? <laughs> uh, the family, like Muslim family, uh, few wives. Yeah. So, any sort of differences? I'm not sure of the uh, if anyone has studied that, but uh, in in general, the um, there was a survey of um, the status of women in the world, and they looked at unhappiness, and the most unhappy women in the world were in India in fact, um, in terms of uh, objective uh, assessment of a sense yeah, of among, quality. Among the Hindus, I mean, among the Indians they, also, you see different religious see, faith. They didn't separate Hindus or Muslims or Christians. No this, no, this was done on, the, on a general um, uh, assessment of happiness, of the status of women. And in India, I think one unfortunate thing is this uh, caste system, the low caste. Uh, untouchable people, or sometimes you see. A little bit. Hmm. I, but the other thing is, with, with a country like India, which has been undergoing westernization very rapidly, hmm. you have a sudden influx of um, movies about violence and sexual violence. These things are, are new, newer to India than in other countries, perhaps. And with that has been a rising incidence of, oh. of trauma and violence in, in India. We know this. The other thing is, in, in the clinics which, are, which I have, we see a number of young women, more young women, who are experiencing 
uh, assault in the house. And often this is um, happening in, in home situations where there is um, a mother, single mother, but a lot of other men in the household and the boundaries in the relationships are not traditional or not safe sometimes for the developed or the young woman in the household. This is not uncommon. This is happening a little bit more than we, we want. And the impact is of increasing depression, increasing problems of drug and alcohol use in the adolescent or the, the younger uh, generation. So your comment before, we want the younger generation to lead the mm -hmm. way, is uh, sometimes is, is more of becoming a problem rather than a solution. It's very serious, very serious. And then uh, one sort of survey, a result of survey in Africa. I think what happened is the, I expected the world survey to show African nation women to have more um, unhappiness, but in fact it was the Indian women because the, um, the sense of that cross of cultures, the clash of cultures, and the, um, the particular sorts of so pressures. Then, then, then must be some differences in big cities yes. and rural areas. Yes, that's right, there is, there is. The, the urbanized areas had a greater level of subjective unhappiness in a, in a number of these surveys. So far, any sort of survey in China, people from China, any sort of this, this kind Surve of survey? Surveys yeah. in China, um, I'm, I'm not sure about that. They, this was a global comparison. Do you have a thought there? Hmm? Do you have a thought about the Chinese situation? I don't know. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> so, if, I mean, if I know, you see, then no need to ask. Exactly. <laughs>